there for the initial form and you and you make a dot underneath it and you're ready to connect on the ha the same way you come from previous letter you make your ha shape and you're ready to connect the ha in the same manner All right this is the simplest way of writing there are there are other ways of um, ha having the medial form and the final form as, as uh, you'll see um, when, when you get to a more advanced level in your Arabic perhaps so again the final form you come from a previous letter and then you just make the jim shape and the pre you come from a previous letter and you make the ha shape and then the ha shape afterwards alright so let's now again clear that and look at an example Oops, let's just get rid of that up okay so suppose we have a letter now uh, a word rather which has these letters we have the ha we have a ba and we have a a tha alright so this word has these three letters how do we connect them so we need the initial form of the ha there we are, ready to connect on, ready to connect on here. We need the medial form of the back that's connecting on either side, letter before and letter after. The ba is represented by a spike, as we saw. And we need the final form of the tha. And there it is, the final form of the tha. Plug in these gaps, and we get something like that. All right, this should be closer to the bottom here. So ha, the ba, and the tha. Let's put in our vowels again. Again, I must emphasize, don't let this confuse you if you haven't done this, this is covered in the next lesson. So ha with the fatha, ba with the fatha, tha with the fatha as well, gives us the verb ha ba tha, which means to be evil or wicked. Then we have the dal, the dha, the ra, and the zai. Okay, so the dal, let's see how that's written. It's like, it's an acute angle. That's all it is, written above the line as an acute angle. The dal, written the same way with a dot, the ra, and the, these really is these two that form a group, and the next two ra and zai, which are going to form a group. But we're just saving a little bit of time and doing them together. The ra, right? So the angle is much bigger, and it comes beneath the line. Here we have a an acute angle, and here we have a much uh, more open angle, which comes beneath the line, and the zai, like that. All right. So what about the uh, the initial, medial, and final form? So again, remember, as with the alif, these form part of that uh, group of six letters that can't connect on to a letter after them, like like the English letter B or P, um, if, if you write joined up writing. So therefore, we're not going to have an initial form or a medial form. All, all we're going to have is a final form. And the way that works is we come from a previous letter and we go into the dal. Come from a previous letter and we go into the dal. Come from a previous letter and we go into the ra. And again, we go into the zai from a previous letter. All right, so let's again uh, see if we can look at an example. So suppose we have a word in which we have the letters dal, the letter ha, and the letter ra. How would we do this? So, so firstly, dal. Can the dal connect to the ha? No, it can't. It's part one of those six letters which can't. There's nothing before it, so and it's not going to connect to anything after it. So we just use the isolated form of dal. What about the ha now? The ha isn't connected to anything before it because, as we said, the dal can't connect on. Uh, but it is connected to something after it. It can connect on to the ra. So we, we're going to use what's called the initial form of the ha. Initial form. Initial form, remember, so as, as you've uh, seen now, initial form doesn't mean that the letter comes at the beginning of the word. It simply means that it's connected on uh, solely to another letter which comes after it, and not to a letter which comes before it. OK, and then we have the ra. So we need the, um, the, the ra is connected on to the letter before. There's nothing after it, and even if there were, uh, the ra wouldn't be able to connect onto it. So we need the final form of the ra, which is like this. So this is the only gap we need to plug in. Let's just plug it in here. We get quite a big line. This is much bigger than you'd normally have. Let's just save some time. We get dal, ha, and ra. So um, putting in some vowels, we have a dhamma, a kasra, and a fatha covered in the next lesson. We get dhu, khi, ra. Dhu, khi, ra, which means to be treasured or stored. Now we're going to have a look at seen, sheen, sod, and wads. As before, it's the first two which form a group and the last two which form a group, but we're just saving some time here. So the seen, we have these three spikes and then this hook beneath beneath them, seen. Sheen, written the same way, with these, these two form a group. Seen, sheen. Now the sod and the wad require a little bit of attention uh, in the way they're written. So the, what happens is we begin just beneath the line, we go up, Okay, and we make this kind of a fish shape, and then there's a little spike, and that's the sod. 
right? So remember, be begin just beneath the line, make this sort of a fish shape, we spike and finish uh, with this hook beneath the line to form the sod. The lod written in the same manner, but we're going to have a dot. So this f uh, fish shape, small spike, and there we have it. The sod and the lod. All right, so what about their um, initial, medial, and final form? So initial form, when we're connecting to a letter after them only, like that. The three spikes of the scene, and then you're ready to connect on. The three spikes of the sheen, and you're ready to connect on. The sod you form in the same way in the beginning. All right, don't forget this little spike, but you're not going to go beneath and make the hook. You're going to connect on. So that's that shape is, is, uh, is needs a little bit of practice to get to get it exactly right. The mod make that shape, and you're ready to connect on to the next letter. Sod and mod. All right, so medial uh, forms when we're connecting to a letter before and after. We come from the previous letter. We make the three spikes for the scene, and you're ready. Sheen, same way. Okay, sod now. So we come from the previous letter. All right. But then what we need to do is just go down here, and then come back up. And that's my medial sod. Right, this is very important to get this little bit here, this little bit here, just beneath, because that's part of the sod. We come from a previous letter, we go down slightly, and we come around to form the sod, uh, uh, the lod in this case. All right, and final, um, uh, the final versions of these come from a previous letter, and we make the scene. Final forms uh, the sod, we come from a previous letter, and again, we make this sort of fish shape with a hook and a sod, and the sheen, of course, with dots and the a lard with a dot there. All right, let's again, let's look at an example. So suppose we have a word which has a scene, it has a jeem, and it has a dal, all right? Scene, jeem, and dal. So again, what form of the scene are we going to use? We're going to use the initial form because it's just connecting onto a letter after it, Noth nothing before it. So that's the initial form of the scene. What about the gene? We're going to use the medial form, of course, because of the letter before and a letter after. It can connect onto the it, it can and does connect onto the dal. Remember, the dal can't connect to anything after it, but it does connect to things before it. So we're going to ha come from a previous letter, make our gene, and we're ready to connect onto the next letter. And the dal, we just use the final form. Let's plug in these gaps. What do we get? S scene. Jim and da. Uh, don't forget the dot for the jim at the end. Put in our vowels. Three fathas we get sa ja da, which means to prostrate. Now we're gonna have a look at the ba and the va. Ba and va. So let's look at their initial their isolated forms. You just come down and you kind of make this like a B shape or a a, a leg and you just keep going. This little flick at the end is important. That's the isolated form of the bar. The va in the same way. So it, it sort of re resembles the English B in its shape, uh, but it's a little more pointy, and there's this thing at the end, this little tail at the end. And va, all right? So they're the isolated forms. Initial initial forms, very easy. And you just connect onto the next letter. You make the va, and you, you're you ready to connect onto the next letter. Um, medial forms, again, very easy. Come from a previous letter. You make the bar and you connect onto the next letter, so it just that should be plugged in that gap. You come from a previous letter and you make the va and you join on. I'm not plugging in my gaps here, it's very bad. Okay, and what about the final forms? It's very it's very predictable. You come from a previous letter and you just make the va and and the, the bar rather and the dot for the uh, for the va. So let's look at um, an example. Again, so if we have a, a word in which we have the letters ba we have the letter ba and we have the letter ra. Right, so how, how is this to be written? Uh, the ba is only connected on to a letter in front of it, so we need the initial form. The ba is connected on either side. We need the medial form. And the ra uh, is only connected to a letter before it. So we need the uh, final form. Plug in these gaps, that gap and that gap. What do we get? The ba, the ba, and the ra. Don't forget the dots. Put in the vowels, and we get ba pi ra, which means to be in, uh, to be ungrateful.